welcome to Build and welcome to our brand new studio. Make some noise. My name is Rihanna Dillon and we are coming live from London. And today I am joined by the stars of Sky One's Living the Dream. Please welcome Philip, Leslie, Rosie and Brennock. Hi, welcome. Girls, have a seat here. Grab a mic. How are you doing, guys? Thank you. Speak in. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. So, tell us a little bit about Living the Dream for those who might not have seen it yet. Philip, you you're, you. you're clearly the one. <laughs> well, okay, so the premise of Living the Dream is it's about um, an English family, a British family, um, who moved to the uh, United States, to Florida, and decide to buy an RV trailer park. And um, that's kind of the premise of the show, really. And then it's about our um, adventures. And there we are. The Pembertons. Looking very happy, as <laughs> usual, <laughs> me. Not good at smiling, am I? <laughs> Looks like we run a cafe. Yeah, well, and so, and um, yeah, so, and our characters, obviously, um, Leslie plays uh, my wife, and these are my children, our children. Um, and uh, it's, it's a comedy, and it's funny, and it's good. So and we have fun shooting it. Series two is just um, beginning to air. I think we've had episode one already available on Sky Go, if anybody wants to go and catch up now. Um, so what has the second series got in store for us? Uh, it's got a mystery um, resident who, um, at the end of the first episode, you find out that he's actually a police officer. Um, it's got... Um, Crazy capers with the American residents. Um, it's got Rosie uh, interacting with new boys because she's trying to get rid of her old boyfriend. Oh, yeah, I want to hear about this. It's got <laughs> uh, Brennock uh, being accused of being a drug dealer when, in fact, he's just a busker. I'm just a busker. Um, <laughs> Give me a light. It's got a wife being sacked from the workplace by her husband. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, it's got, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just got a few um, about that. Um, and it's got a golfer. Uh, a professional golfer who um, has a few massages in his mansion. Oh. Um, yeah, it's quite a lot God, of Oh, my God, it sounds really rammed. That's mm. just like the beginning of the series. <laughs> um, if you do have any questions for our guests, then please do tweet us at Build Series LDN. Or if you're watching on Facebook, then pop a comment in the box below and we'll do our very best to get those questions to you guys. So tell us a little bit more about your characters. So, Rosie... Uh, you have boyfriend issues, so... I do. <laughs> you um, want to get rid of your boyfriend. Tina wants to get rid of her, her boyfriend and kind of uh, this series, she wants to get more kind of into politics and kind of like fight the causes, mm -hmm. um, which was partly because I slightly wanted to get rid of my boyfriend as well, just for... I don't think teenage girls, I don't think storylines that revolve around teenage girls should always be about boys, essentially. Yeah because I think that um, is a bit reductive. Mm -hmm. So we got rid of the boyfriend. He, nice. he goes off to military college. <laughs> and um, yeah, she gets into politics and starts, you know, trying to change the world. Not very successfully. And how does she get on with her brother, Brannock? How do we get on? I don't Fred? know. I'm no. sort of scared of her. <laughs> in oh, oh, in the I show. Oh, no, that, no, in the show I, we're great. But. I hit you quite a lot, don't I? That's like, yeah, you do. Yeah. I rewatched series one the other day to get back in the swing, and you hit me quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sibling, sibling Sibling love. rivalry. So, Freddie, we also, we uh, all kind of recognise you from, from killing yeah. Jon Snow that one. in Game of Thrones. Um, is there anything as dramatic that happens to Freddie? Uh, in, <laughs> in living the dream. I mean, as as far as groundbreaking stories go, uh, <laughs> no, I think I think Freddie is he's a lot more fun to play and a lot simpler. Mm -hmm. um, he's more into his music and girls and not being very successful at doing either <laughs> as a teenage boy, and that's something I can highly relate to in the character. <laughs> So yeah. So tell us about the busking scene because that was a really gorgeous actually to sort of have this revelation that you have a gorgeous voice. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I'm a musician on the side. Um, I go under the name McGovern. Um, I've got my check them out on SoundCloud. SoundCloud, Spotify, EP out now. <laughs> Little plug. Um, no, I my character was meant to be doing music, and I very cheekily spoke to the producers and asked if I could get my music in the show. So every time you hear Freddie sing, that's actually my 
my words, my lyrics, my chords, me. So impressive, it really much. is. Yeah, that is a treat. Did, well, sorry, did you say you killed Jon Snow? I did. Did you not hear about that? It was a couple of years ago. So who's reading the news on Channel 4 now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> hey. Sally's the dad <laughs> of the family, week, guys. aren't you? Proper dad joke. So tell us a little <laughs> bit more about Mal, the dad, then. Well, exactly. His dad, he's, a, he's, just, he's, sort of, um, he's the sort of eternal optimist, really, and... Uh, you know, which is quite fun because he see it is the po the positive on on everything, but um, he needs to be reined in by um, by Jen most of the time because he sort of um, he sort of runs before he can walk, mm -hmm. um, and Jen is very much there to uh, to keep everybody and everything, and particularly Mal grounded and in, and rooted in some sort of reality. Leslie, so. I do I, l I love Jen. I love your relationship with each other because. Although, you know, it just feels incredibly real. How much do you work with the writers and the directors in kind of creating your character? Well, um, I mean, the first series was, you know, kind of put together, I think, before Phil and I came on mm -hmm. board. But then I, I think the great virtue of getting the opportunity to do something again is that writers can start writing to actors' strengths and, um, you know, things that... that uh, you know, little quirks that they have, they can really start to pull those out. And um, I think that what's great about the relationship between Mal and Jen in the writing is that they're a middle-aged couple who aren't like a lot of middle-aged couples that you see on TV who don't like each other particularly mm -hmm. or whose marriage is in crisis or who are having really big, heavy problems with their kids. They are actually really positive people. They've got to a point in their lives where they could stick or twist with what they're doing. And they've thrown their lives up in the air and they, they're taking a gamble and they're taking their kids with them and their kids are up for it too. So it's actually a really positive version of family life in, you know, for our eyes, a positive place because there's blue skies and sea rather than gray clouds and Brexit. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's a Don't bit of a relief actually um, to, to be part of a show that's representing middle-aged life mm -hmm. in that way because very often what you get is the kind of rather kind of grungy side story, which is about hating your husband or your husband hating you or, you know, having this whole crisis about the way that you look because you're over 50. Mm -hmm. And actually what the show does is it just goes, look, this is an alternative to that version of family life. This is an alternative to that version of being a 50-year-old woman. And so I love its positivity and... Um, and the fact that, you know, you're, you, you can be a woman over 50, but you can have a sense of humour and you can be really anxious about still what you've got ahead of you rather than just settling for being this person who facilitates everybody else's life. Mm -hmm. So I really love Jen too. You have such fun together and I think we can show you a little clip. I think this is my favourite scene in the series so far. <laughs> So, what prep did you do for those stoned scenes? <laughs> what? That's what I really want to know. No prep. prep. No prep yeah, what whatsoever. Prep? <laughs> well, we just smoked loads of weed, obviously. Obviously. No, we do. It's no, we we it's called acting. I think. It? <laughs> it's it. quite hard to do fake laughter, though. It's, really, it's much easier to keep it going. Your jaw really starts. Yeah. You know. Yeah, especially um, when you have to do it again and again and yeah. again. Yeah. It was yeah. very funny, though. I was biting the insides of my cheeks when oh, we really? to stop myself from laughing yeah. at the pair of them. Yeah, we were very lucky. We did it in two shots, so we weren't actually <laughs> seen with our genuine yeah. reaction to it. What was it? So you were actually oh, does increasing. that happen quite a lot? Do you kind of make each other? corpse quite a lot yeah well I yeah. mean the thing of the, the great thing about living the dream is that um, you know on set uh, and not just us but I think it applies to the crew as well there's a really genuinely good atmosphere and people um, at work having a good time mm -hmm. so you know the four of us when we're together we do have a great time we spark off one another and sometimes that you know feeds into the scene but um, I think that's one of the reasons why everybody loves doing the job, is that it's, People it's like really good yeah. fun. Yeah. People like guesting on our show because they know they're going to have a good time. And it's quite nice because they come out to um, wherever we're shooting for, you know, four or five days mm -hmm. a week here and there and um, join in the fun. You know, we say, come, come and play. So what interesting <laughs> guests have you had on this series then? 
Um, oh God, don't ask me names. <laughs> you brought them up. I know. <laughs> Well, I don't, actually, I'm you know, it's a lot I just of the call Americans. everybody love and ducky. <laughs> but <laughs> the, a lot of the Americans who, who came out, mm -hmm. um, because the first season we shot in Savannah, so the four of us were like the, the, the strangers in a foreign land. Mm -hmm. um, but we were filming in Spain this series, so a lot of the American characters oh, really? came over to Spain. <gasps> and what was really fascinating was the way that they regard Europe as a sort of, you know, they, they'd have a weekend off and say, oh, yeah, I might go to Austria. <laughs> um, yeah, I've never been to Venice. Um, I think I might go to Athens. Because uh, they, they sort of regard Europe in the same way that they regard America, mm -hmm. which is you, you can get on a plane and in two hours be somewhere completely different. Mm -hmm. Whereas for us, you know, we're so sort of parochial and the idea of just going to Madrid from yeah. Malaga was like a it's big crazy. deal. Yeah. Um, so um, it was great being around um, them and the way that they just regarded Europe as their you know, because they were there working. Mm -hmm. When they had free time, Europe was their playpen. playpen. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other sort of thing that you play on quite a lot in the series is the difference between the Americans and the Brits. So there's that great sex chat that you two have um, when you're kind of accused of being quite uptight as Brits, which I think is, is fair enough. But there are there any other differences that you kind of wanted to play on throughout the series? Well, I think that the, you know, we were obviously very keen to avoid the whole um, political situation mm -hmm. that exists in America at the moment. Which one are you um, talking about? Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, you know the one. Um, because that changes every day. Yeah. And, um, you know, if you start, get, it, it's not, it, our show is not that kind of show. Mm -hmm. You know, it's unashamedly about this lot and the people that they're with, rather than having a kind of larger world debate. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a very conscious decision. Well, having said that, I'm now going to force you to answer <laughs> things that you prefer about Americans or the UK. So, Donald Trump or Theresa May? Oh, neither. I'm all right, thanks. <laughs> what a horrible question. That is nasty. Pork pies or hot dogs? Hot dogs. Hot dogs. Pies. Pork pies. Oh, really? What were you? Hot dog. Hot, Hot dog. I think the Americans. Interesting. Uh, Cadbury's or Hershey's? Cadbury's. <laughs> ne neither. Uh, Hershey's tastes like babies. Cadbury's are, but no, they're owned by Hershey's now. Yeah, they've yeah, they they definitely cool. changed. Yeah, they've been over. Uh, Change is, taste has changed. After but eight. But the even after just eight. the name. <laughs> I love an after eight. Gullion. Um, baseball or rugby? Rugby. 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 <laughs> No opinion. Rose is like, rugby don't rug care. Rug rug rugby, <laughs> rugby. Baseball's stupid, stupid game. Baseball. Nobody <laughs> understands it. It goes on forever. It's ridiculous. Um, baseball or Cara Delevingne? Baseball. Baseball or Cara Delevingne? I thought that was an odd one. <laughs> an odd Paris one. Hilton or Cara Delevingne? Cara, Cara, Cara Delevingne. Delevingne. Oh, yeah, she is amazing. Apple crumble or apple pie? Crumble. Pie. <laughs> I don't know, oh. either, actually. <laughs> got cus but custard, not Anything. cream, custard. What are the pros and cons of filming abroad? Pros are different place. Mm. You're working and um, you get a chance to meet people who really live in that place rather than sort of visiting a place as a tourist and, you know, not accessing the area in that way. The one cons of the, are being one away of the, from home. Well, the, one of the cons, I suppose, when we shot in America in Savannah was the weather, believe it or not. Yeah. Mm. Um, it was incredibly uh, temperamental around that part of the world. You know, a storm could come and we could start off shooting in the morning and it'd be beautiful blue skies and it would be lovely and marvellous. And then we'd get to sort of lunchtime and then these big clouds would come in and we'd be told, you know, it's a rain storm coming in. So obviously with all the, the electrical equipment and where we're shooting kind of in a, in a glade, as I like to call it, <laughs> where our trailer park was, um, is, is a risk of lightning and, and all that. So we, we would lose sort of a lot of hours um, just waiting for the, the storm mm -hmm. to pass. And actually, so believe it or not, we got more sunshine in Spain and it was much more constant. Mm -hmm. And we could get, um, you know, and filming as everybody knows cost a lot of money. And if you can't shoot, you're losing, you know, a, a, a huge amount of money. So... Um, it was important to have somewhere that we had the constant weather. So that was Spain. Um, we've got a question from Social. This is from Ness Byrne. It's about trumpets. Celine Dion's trumpets. How on earth did Phil and Leslie ever make it through that scene? 
Celine Dion's Trumpets. Yeah, you say it when you're high, I think, don't you? you go, oh, well, I don't know, I can't remember, I was high. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a method actor, Rosie, you know me, I'm a method man. If I'm high, I'm high, okay? I don't, I don't just come down, darling. Do you, have, do you change it each time, or is it all specifically written, or is there a little bit of improv that you... Oh, no, we do around? quite a lot of improv. Yeah? yeah. I mean, that yeah. bit with the trip, for instance, when we first come back, <laughs> yeah. that was all improvised. <laughs> we, well, they had the camera set up, and me and Les just said, look, we'll just we'll do something, just keep, keep the camera running. Uh -huh. And, you know, I just... And so I just do my comedy trip. <laughs> Actually, it was, a, it was a sort of my slight tribute to, to Dudley Moore from Arthur, <laughs> oh, nice. if I'm honest. But I always say, if you're going to nick, nick off the best. <laughs> So it's a good, very important. It's a good rule to live by. Mm. What is next for the Pembertons after this? Is there a third series in the works? Well, we're waiting to mm. find out. Oh, amazing! Do you Can think you you'll go it? back to the same place filming? If you I think do? they'll go back to Spain. Yes. Yeah, we'd love to. I think we'd all be up for doing it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, 100%. It's a, that's a fun show. Yeah. Fun. So you know, um, it's like everything now. You you have to wait for the combined viewing figures and uh, yeah, all that sort of nonsense, but. You know, I think it's a show that, as Leslie was saying, it's just a little bit different. It's not yeah. trying to be anything other than, you know, it's an hour's escapism entertainment mm -hmm. about, you know, the, the and positive role models. And um, I just don't think there's enough of that on telly at the moment, especially in these times, yeah. you know, with Brexit. And it's and real everything. family viewing. That everybody yeah, and everybody can, can watch it. And, watch and we enjoy making it. And yeah. if I think, you know, if, if hopefully people will have as much fun watching it as we have making it. So, yeah, I think we'd like to continue doing it, for sure. Oh, well, I hope we do get to mm. see a third series. But you can watch the second series on Sky One, 9pm on Tuesdays. Sadly, that is all we have time for, though. So please give a massive round of applause to our guests. Thank you so much for joining us. Cheers.